Hey guys, Rich from Richmond Gaming. Hope everyone is doing fantastic. Well, welcome to another Shatterpoint video. This time we've got the data bank download for Lord Maul. We're going to break down all of his cards. We've seen most of them before uh, from Adepticon, but we've now got the official release, so we thought we'd take a look at them. And going through this with me, as always, is Mr. Quinn Duggan. Quinn, how the hell are you doing, sir? I'm all right. I've uh, put together a pretty good draft roster. Yes, we had our draft uh, yesterday, didn't we? By the time this video comes out, it'll be yesterday. Uh, always fun to do a draft, isn't it, on MCP? <clears throat> and who knows? Maybe one day we'll be able to do some draft for uh, for Shatterpoint, but we'll probably I feel like it'll be a lot quicker. Probably, <laughs> probably a little bit further away than uh, <laughs> than than where we are now. Um, Maul, he's an interesting mm. character, isn't he? He's you know. He, I think he doesn't like Obi Wan Kenobi. He doesn't like Obi Wan. He's definitely, I would say, the character from live action who was fleshed out more than any other character in the animated series. Whether no, that he, be his Rebels, legs aren't flesh, actually, his robot less legs. Flesh. It's got less flesh now. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it, it is that version of Ball, isn't it? It's pre. Sorry, it's it's post. <laughs> That's uh, that's in this game as as Lord Maul. Post bisection, um, yeah, yeah. The top top half is is Maul. Um, what what do you think? You know, how how does Maul stand out for you as a as a character? Is he one that you are interested in? Do you like Maul? What's your thoughts? Uh, yeah, I really like Maul. I like how he became sort of involved with Mandalore uh, through his arcs in the Clone Wars. Um, Sam Witwer does a really good voice. Uh, does a really good job voicing him. Just go and Kenobi. Kenobi. I mean, Very we'll probably put there. it in here. Hold on. Okay. All right. I can see him, my mind's eye. Kenobi. Woo! Kenobi. <laughs> um. But yeah, it's, it is it is pretty darn good. Well, let's hope, Quinn. And I think I think they've done a pretty good job. But let's hope, as we talk about a lot, that they they get the essence of what Maul actually is in his card. So let's go over and take a look. Then data bank download, Lord Maul, um, once battered and broken, now restored and fueled only by his hatred of an old rival, Lord Maul. Trademark <laughs> is the focus of today's Star Wars Shatterpoint unit preview. Um, thoughts on his model? Uh, yeah, it's a nice model. Um, you know, we saw Dallas paint it up recently. Uh, we saw the undercoat version. We saw yes. that there was a lot of actual sculpted detail on the face. Um, a lot which, of sculpted detail. Is that right yeah. nice? But yeah, really lovely sculpt. Really lovely model. Um, I mean, you know. Very well painted here as well, but just the amount of you know the the facial tattoos that he's got on things um, yeah. look look really really good. So let's go down then and break um, break down a couple of parts of his card. First of all, his his character. These are character cards, aren't they? I think these are called. Um, I forget the I forget that the card. terminology with them. S ca yeah, card. Anyway, his card. Card, um, card card. Yeah. So he is Lord Maul, and then he is. Maul. So it'd be interesting if we're going to get a Darth Maul at some point. There's the there's potential for that, I think. Yeah. But D Darth Maul, Sith Assassin. Yeah. So this is definitely Lord Maul. Uh, he's going to be a primary unit, and he's going to be a single, uh, a single character. Because remember he's that little icon. Absolute there. unit is what he is. It's going to be an absolute unit. Yeah. Uh, he's going to bring eight squad points. Um, so let's just touch on that one a second, Quinn. Because... Oh no, the corset is really unbalanced. Ah. Uh... <laughs> Well, no, my question was going to be, did you think they were going to do 7 and 8, 7 and 8? I know initially we spoke uh, about if that. If they were going we? to mirror it, then more would have been my choice for 7 on the dark side. But yeah. with the fact that they are actually doing Savage, it makes sense for his secondary to be a 4 as well. Because yeah. if it was just Gar Saxon, he was the only secondary really designed to go with Maul. Gar Saxon can be a 3. He's crap. Savage, on the other hand, bit better. I I also think if we're comparing him to other characters in this game right now, there's only three other primaries to compare him to. Um, he feels more in line with Asajj 
and Ahsoka than he does Anakin, right? In terms of his abilities, like a one on one between Anakin and Maul, whilst it may be I mean, there may be some back and forth. Anakin and anyone is probably going to end up with Anakin victory, which is why he's kind of become my boy. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Nah, no, I'm, talk- do dumb quotes. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about just like, sort of in the movies and and you know everything yeah, else. Yeah, in like, terms I- of like in universe, like Maul is probably the one that would give Anakin the best fight. But, but I still don't still think he beats him. Lose. Yeah, yeah, I I agree, I agree. So it brings us eight squad points. Uh, and he he brings uh, f- three. We're going to call it force power. I'm fed up of calling it wills force of, the, of force. the wills, force of the wills, whatever it is, wills. Because um, it's not but about and somebody wrote like that. It's actually wills. Like we know what the wills are. It's just funny because of the wills, Shik. And Pagani, like that, we we know that it's Whills. Whills, you've got to say it like, uh, what's his name from Family Guy? <laughs> you, want some, you want some Force of the Whills? <laughs> it's not Cool Whip, it's Force of the Whills. Um, so let's have a look at his card then, Lord Maul. Uh, he has two active abilities. First one, Force Speed, it's going to cost him one Force Power. This unit, uh, each character in this unit may make a full move. Uh, pretty standard, we spoke about this, haven't we? It seems like most Force users are having another way to be able to do a move yeah. without spending an action on it. But they've um, got some mobility tech built in, right? Yeah, yeah. And then his second one is there is no place to run. Uh, this is going to cost two force power. Choose a character in this unit and an enemy character within range three of that character. Pull the chosen enemy character range two towards the chosen ally character. Then the chosen enemy character gains exposed um and exposed is the next defense dice that they roll they are not going to be able to um add in any expertise aren't they so a big thing for a lot of people's defense is that expertise that they get yeah. um taking that off them is is pretty like good chucking that on like an ahsoka or something and just going yeah no you die now pretty yeah good. especially when especially when they're from what we've seen so far, Quinn, isn't it exposed? Sorry, um, expertise is where you get to do the dice changing, right? You get to change yeah. blocks. Sorry, you get to change crits into strikes and so on and so forth. So, yeah, yeah very, you very dice powerful. Changing, you also get some mobility and some recovery off the back of that as well, which is yeah. really strong to deny. Huge, absolutely huge. Uh, he's got one reactive ability, which is revenge. <laughs> I must have revenge. Um, I quite I've got, like I've my got to say, you do a I, good mall impression. I quite like my mall, yeah. You, um, you do like sinister, semi whiny mall very well. It, it, it's it's very much close. I mean, I don't think he says more than two lines in the actual Phantom Menace, but it's very much a Sam Witwer like you know. Yeah. I'm broken. I, I, I don't know how good your Kenobi is though. I, I'm never getting there. Never yeah. getting there. Not not at the time of night that we're recording either. So maybe one day. Um, when this unit is wounded by a melee attack, after the attack is resolved, one character in this unit, that's Maul, uh, may... Now, do we work this out? This was Dash. That, that's, was Dash? That's Dash, yeah. This is Dash, yeah. And make a five-dice melee attack targeting the character that wounded it. Um, so, once again... But, but it's not five dice, is it? <clears throat> well... Well, 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 well. We we will see, won't we? Uh, how how much it is. Um, quick reminder as well. That even though Quinn, this doesn't have a force power. Um, its force power is zero, or its force cost is zero. So if he does, um, if he uh, does get no, wounded, it's, it's an innate ability. Oh, this is innate. It's not re- no. This is reactive, yeah. isn't it? No, no. That's the oh reactive is the little problem. arrows, isn't it? Yeah. Oh my word. So this doesn't. Wow, yeah, this is this is brutal. Um, so yeah, as, Look, as we'll he, see, he must have revenge. If you don't have any force points left, he still must have it. He must, he must still have it, must he? Yeah, yeah. Um, we'll go to this next part first because then this will make more sense with what you just said there. Um, so sustained by rage. Uh, this is his, and I always forget the. Why do I forget the name of these Quinn? I identity. always want to say leadership. Their identity. Yeah. Um, while this unit is not wounded, 
when it would spend force power to use an ability, it may suffer damage equal to the cost of the ability instead. For every three damage this unit has, characters in this unit add one die to their melee attack rolls. For each injured token this unit has, characters in this unit add three dice to their attack rolls. Um, so he's got 11 stamina and he's got two durability. So as it sort of alludes to the thing, he is a little bit glass cannon-y. Um, I, I'm a little we'll... interested by that like first little snippet of the rule. When, while this unit is not wounded. Very interesting. Well, we know that... Because he can't use any of his abilities whilst he's wounded. None of them are reactive, right? Well, that's what they said. Like, it's very strange. Unless he's, like, really super, super proofing it, just so that... Yeah, just in case. Maybe it's just, like, clear language to make sure that those corner case scenarios yeah. don't happen. But it's still a bit weird. It's, it's weird, isn't it? Like... You often think, don't you, that rules in the rule book don't need to be put on the card? You know, like they don't put that this, that, you know, this ability may only be used once per turn, this ability may only, you know. But yet they've chosen to put this here as well. Now, mm. we have, se you know, we have seen. And again, we've got to remember that when, when they were doing these demonstrations at Adepticon, some, you know, <clears throat> by the time the recordings got done and things. Some of the, like, there were like three, maybe four days in. They'll have been doing long shifts. I don't think we can take every single thing that they've said, said as being actual gospel. But I mean, they you also talk. can't take, like, the actual wording of the articles as that either, right? We know that, that from MCP. But half of, like, that the also... articles that they put in MCP actually contradict the cards they're showing in the <clears> article. <throat> Yeah, that, that, that is also true. It's as if they wrote the blurb and then finalised the cards afterwards and yeah. nobody ever went back. Um, so why does this affect Revenge? I must have Revenge. Uh, obviously, he's going to be able to add attack dice equal to what he's got there. Um, so there's two elements to this. It, isn't it's there? always a minimum of three, right? Um, it. Well, because no. the first time he's been wounded, he's going to have at least nine damage on him. Because he'll have taken eleven to be wounded, right? No, because uh, sorry, yes. so yes, yes, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, so it's a minimum of three. Um, it's a minimum of three, and I believe a maximum of six nine. Uh, six. six because he's never going. He, he can never yeah, have more than one he injured have token. That third durability, he can't trigger it that yeah. third time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But still. Six extra dice in this game yeah. for your last right. hurrah is pretty two, damn good. Two free swings with, you know, seven dice, then ten. That's not bad. Yeah, because you assume then that, you know, revenge, I must have revenge happen, you know, triggers. I mean, obviously, when... if someone shoots him, it's not going to trigger because it's if he's wounded by a melee. But, that's a good you know. point, actually. Yeah, that's a very, very good point. You know, maybe that's the thing. And also, he is missing... Um, a What's deflect, the right? deflection, yeah, the deflect that Anakin has got. So maybe that's the thing. Maybe the, those long range shooters putting damage into Maul is 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 what you want to do. Um, but really interesting card. Um, as we mentioned, eleven stamina, two health. He's also a Dathomirian, which is very nice. Obviously, we saw uh, the Dathomirian box uh, with the Night Sisters. He's going to be a Force user. He's a scoundrel, which is really interesting. Because you could also rude, imagine, we'll yeah, I mean, you, you you would imagine that anyone with the any of the bounty hunters are going to be scoundrels. Han Solo it, it's going is to be going to be a like scoundrel, scum and villainy, right? It's yeah. I was just going to say it's it, scum it, and it's villainy, scum and villainy it? but it allows people like Han to be in there, right? Yeah, which I do like because there's no, you know, Han's got a shaded past, right? A jaded I mean, past, even. Han is scum. I will freely accept that as a... an imperial lover. He's a nerf herder, but he ain't scruffy looking. He's, he's, um, he's a scruffy looking nerf herder, and he's absolute <laughs> scum. Um, and then obviously he's part of the Shadow Collective there as well. Um, obviously Shadow Collective primarily they are the uh, Mandalorian Super Commandos, led by Lord Maul. Can you see any other Shadow Collective coming into it? Is there any others that you can uh, think I of, Quinn? Can see, that... like, maybe we see some of the Black Suns. Um... 
I, I mean, I guess if you're talking like Shadow Collective, it, it's not quite Shadow Collective, it's sort of Crimson Dawnish, but that's basically Shadow Collective. You could see like Kira or like Paul Bettany's character from Solo, who's, maybe? Who's Kira? Amelia Clark. Ah, uh, okay. Oh, yeah, because they've got that scene at the end, haven't they? Where yeah, yeah, and he's it's like, like I'm a hologram. Yeah. Oh, they, they so wanted a sequel to that movie, didn't they? To be fair, <laughs> the movie's not as bad as people think I... it is. It just released after The Last Jedi. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's why it did. That's Which is why, why it, did it really like, massively suffered. But it's actually, you know, it's an all right Star Wars film. It's okay. It's okay. Not it's any, better you know. than, like, at least half of the actual Skywalker saga. That, Which is a that, low bar. Um, I'd say a third. It's better than a third of the Skywalker saga. I, I'd say um, that, <laughs> You're, you're but, um, too easy on those movies. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you know, a little bit more stamina than than the other primaries, but too too durability. Um, yeah. He's gonna go. Is... Well, he's gonna go down effectively like one card rotation quicker than all the other primaries, right? Yeah, but he is potentially, you know, his extra attack to get off, I think is going to be a lot easier than, um, than so what Anakin's is right? or Ahsoka's is or something like that. No, yeah. Anakin's is super Anakin just, Do you think? Anakin just double taps whoever he wants. Oh, no, it's Ahsoka's in her identity, isn't it? Yeah. Get, let's uh, do it, yeah. Where, whereas Anakin um, is just, oh, I hit you once this round, I'll hit you again, screw you. I'll just spend some, yeah. I'll spend some, them, so spend much. spend a Pagani and a shick and uh, just yeah, do yeah. it again. Um, so yeah, overall, Quinn. Um, I mean, look, as we'll see from his thing, he's going to be a glass cannon, uh, and he does yeah. bring something very, very interesting. So let's go down and take a look yeah. at his um, stance cards. Let's just zoom in here. But obviously, he's a primary, so he's going to come with two sides. Dark Rage, it's one that we've seen already, but we have now know a little bit more, don't we, about the cards yeah. and the symbols and everything else. Um, so, Dark Rage, um, no range attack, as we've seen from every other Force user up until now, uh, and he's going to have five defense dice against ranged attacks. His um, melee is going to be seven with five defense, but as we've said, he's getting those extra dice uh, from uh, from his identity there as well. Um, his two expertise on this side of his card are going to be double bladed lightsaber and duo. Uh, double bladed lightsaber, double bladed lightsaber. Either um, one to two is going to give him a crit and a damage. Three is going to give him a crit, a strike, and a damage. And then four plus is going to give him two crit and two damage and um, lots of damage there quinn um yeah big, big damage his, output yeah on 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 his abilities uh, Some sorry, guaranteed on his expertise as well. like yeah if he rolls a single expertise that's a guaranteed three damage regardless yeah, of what you the can't block a crit is. well potentially in a well, circle you can turn that crit into a whatever but yeah i mean look you you expect that you're going to be rolling more than three anyway don't you well, um so. So, yeah, uh, let's have a quick look at the stance then, or the tree even. Uh, down the middle, you've got two damage, two damage, uh, and then a damage and a shove. Two damage and a shove, and then a shove at the end. And if you guys remember uh, from the last video breakdown we did, each of these is uh, resolved in turn, and you can only move left to right. Moles, this particular tree was the one that was confusing. It, it was wasn't the it? only one that like it comes had the back on itself. To double back, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Like resolve them all one at a time. So plenty of, you know, plenty of um, big damage control here. Like, well, big damage, big control as well. You know, yeah, being I mean, able to push still, people off points. He's not as killing as Anakin in my mind. Well, uh, I think I think we'll maybe I think he maybe brings something a little bit different. To yeah. Anakin, and we'll get onto that in in a second. Um, so Quinn, across the top of his tree, then um, it's all what are they? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, and then it's six along the bottom, isn't it? So um, across the top, you get the two damage, obviously, with your starting point plus two more plus one, and then we're going to get a strain. Um, and just a quick reminder that a strain is the next time they do. Next time the opponent does anything with a strain on there, other than a recover action, they're going to take three damage from that strain. So, but once super, again, super powerful. Like, asks us some questions with regard to whether 
you can heal off of combat, uh, like heal off of combat tree results in order to actually remove a condition yeah. and use that full heal action. Because if that's the case, that's going to be really solid. But once again, that's the thing that's up in the air still. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what it does. Uh, we then got a jump action with two damage, and then obviously coming down to the uh, the shove there along the bottom. Then obviously up to the middle, and then an extra damage, extra two damage, and then extra two damage and a shove if you can somehow manage to get those six results. I mean, you, I think... you say somehow. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it means that there's no doubling back on trees, which would have been nice with that number of dice. Um, bit sad but i, I can yeah. see why from a game design perspective like you know. yeah i think i think it makes sense doesn't it i do think yeah. it makes sense um quickly then just round out his defensive expertise on this with then julia uh so one to two is going to give him a block three is going to give him a block a heal we need to clarify exactly what yeah. a heal is yet uh and a uh, a jump action and then on four plus he's going to get uh two blocks two heals, and then a jump action. I want to just touch on these for a second, Quinn, because mm. do you think you are going to be able to heal off damage that's done as part of this attack where you've rolled the expertise, or do you think these will happen, these heals, before the damage has been dealt? I um, think they'll... Re in much the same way that MCP has, you know... Attacker resolves all their effects on the same timing step, then Defender. You, you'll have a similar thing in chat point, I think, where... Le well, well, let me let me push something out here, because... Does that then allow you to not be wounded? Is that going to be the thing? Well, you resolve your expertise prior to the blocks. Mm. Because... Because it's not just dice, is it? It's the combat tree that then runs yeah. to actually deliver the damage. Um, so all the dicey dice things are all resolved before you get to the combat tree. Um, it's going to be interesting because yeah, I could see it. They would be useless. Um, and also, does it then mean that you can jump and then still be shoved by someone? If you yeah, can't it's be so weird, isn't it? yeah. Like, it'll be interesting also, to see. At what point do you gain your wounded token? Because is it after the entire thing is resolved? In which case, you would maybe it, trigger the heal and then not be it, at that threshold anymore. Or so it is. Yes. So they did show, and again, this is when I think this was the Will Schick demonstration that he did by himself. We have to remember, four days in, tired probably 12, 13, 14 hour shifts. But the way that he did it was he resolved each step at a time, put the damage in a little pool and then did the pushes and put the damage in. <clears throat> and at the end of it, put the damage onto the character. But before that had all happened, the expertise had been resolved, but we didn't see yeah. expertise that did anything clever. So I think it's, I think these heals and these jumps are very powerful if they are, you know, are they are they taken off the total damage pool? For example, is Maybe. that you know is that is that the way that they are done? So you you know you resolve all your steps in the combat tree, and then you get to heal the damage that hasn't yet been done. I, I don't yeah, know. It, 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 it's another. It's going to be one of those things that's answered in the core rule book, right? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Which, fingers crossed, guys, we should be getting our hands on in the not too distant future, which I know we are both very, very excited about, oh, yeah. aren't we? Uh, but overall, Dark Rage, what's your thoughts on it? It's solid. Um, like, they say it's, like, the high damage output, like, stance for him, and, like, that is probably true. I I think I've been a bit spoiled by seeing Anakin so early and just be like, oh, three results and damage on Gem So. <laughs> That's pretty good. I'll T-tap with that, please. Yeah, I mean, it, this is 12 damage maximum, isn't it? Um, with yeah. this, with whereas this Anakin one. is pretty much on an average roll fourteen minimum if you spend the two fours. Um, yeah, depends on who he's coming up against, doesn't it? It is because um, of that expertise he's got, where he gets the two crits for one expertise. Like yeah. that really sells it. 
But yeah. No, it really does. It really does. Uh, <clears throat> but he does have another side to his stance. Let's take a quick look at that as well. Okay, so this was the side that we didn't see, Quinn, uh, until recently. We got we got a, a picture of it, but it's nice to get it in all its full high resolution glory. And it is sinister cunning. And one thing, Quinn, that you will notice straight away is range four attack mm. with seven dice. Um, so the first, uh, and I think we've seen both stance cards for all four primaries now. Well, we've had the data correct. back download for all four primaries. All four, now. yeah. So <clears throat> the only primary in the game uh, on release, because uh, I can't imagine, uh, well, actually, I think Dooku will have a range attack with Force Lightning. Right. But I think it's going to do. It's going to be range three, right? Um, I, I would but even, so. even so, in the core box, the only primary character in the game uh, with a um, with a ranged attack, uh, and this is something else that he brings that's very very different. Being able to make those attacks whilst not being in melee range um, is is pretty darn sweet. So Sinister Cunning uh, is going to be range four. Uh, for melee, uh, it's going to be seven dice, six defense against ranged. And then his melee, he does lose a attack dice there, Quinn, uh, but he does gain a defense dice. Um, his expertise, we've got thrown lightsaber, we've got double bladed lightsaber, and we've got perfect defense, um, which is pretty good. Mm. Well, let's then go through thrown lightsaber first of all. <clears throat> it's going to be, um, I mean, actually identical to his double-bladed lightsaber on uh, both sides of the card. Well, he, he's um, throwing the same lightsaber. What he's, throwing, he's throwing the same lightsaber. So for both double-bladed and for thrown, um, one crit, one damage for one to two, with three, uh, one crit, one damage, one strike. Uh, I don't don't call it a hit. Um, and then on four plus... I, I like uh, how you pointed at me when you said <coughs> that when oh, no, I it's, it's, I, correcting you. It's it's me. Yeah, I'm well aware it's you're, me. Oh, you're pointing uh, yourself in your own screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm pointing at myself, yeah. Um, and then on four plus, two crits, two damage uh, for, for both of them. Um, Buckwin, it's that combat tree, isn't it, that is very, very different to the Dark yeah. Rage side. Um, so starting off, he's going to get two damage uh, and a shove. Uh, he's then going to get, and I forget the name of this one, Quinn, Pin. Uh, no, this isn't Pin, is it? No, this is, is Reposition. Reposition, yeah. reposition um, which is a full, full long movement, right? Which is super, super good. Uh, yeah, it's two... either a full, like, advance, or it's actually a full move action. If it's full move action, that is insanely strong. <clears throat> it, it, it uses the large tool. As in whether you can choose to climb or whatever with it, uh, right? No, no. So they specifically said in the video, again, what they said in the videos, um, they they specifically mentioned that they can climb, they can use a reposition to climb down because of gravity, which would lead me to believe that because they've said that they you can do that means that you can't do it the other way. But again, I it's not... if that also extends to like ingress points, right? Can you use a ladder? Because that's different. I would imagine. Climbing, I right? would imagine so. Yeah, I would imagine oh, so. That that tasty. I like that. Really good. Yeah, really good. Uh, along the top, we're going to get another damage. Then we're going to get pin. Uh, pin is they can't make a move act. Well, again, we think it's they can't make a move action. Quinn, we don't know if it's they just can't move. I mean, that is yeah. really good if it's can't move at all. Uh, plus the damage. Then along this bottom, along the middle again, uh, two heals and a damage, a jump and a damage, and then three damage. If we go along the bottom way, um, we're going to get the expose and we're going to get a damage and then obviously back across through the middle. So we're looking at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve damage from uh, from it in total with the possibility of going up to 13 damage, Quinn, if the person you're attacking is either already exposed or is already pinned. Um, because we know that if they've already got those special conditions, it just counts as an extra damage, which I do really like. I really like that you don't lose anything. Uh, what what did you say through. max damage was there? 13. Correct. Just double-checking, just double-checking. Double yeah, yeah, which is still... So it's 12... Unless they've already got a special condition yeah, that yeah. you've you've already got, so you know for the for the more defensive side, um, 
it's still pretty good. And let's not remember... I, I, that... I think this is the side that I'm going to see him in <clears throat> more often than not. Well, let's not forget that he can do this at range as well. Yeah. Um, with more dice. <laughs> with more dice, uh, which is which is pretty crazy. Um, lots of healing in there as well. And I think, Quinn, for me, why I think this is going to be the one that I start in is, you know, you take the damage, you use... You know, you take the damage rather than using the force power. You move yourself up. You take the damage rather than using the force power to pull them towards you. you and then suddenly you suddenly got an extra die in there. You get an extra die, so you go from either seven or six to you know eight or or seven. Um, and you either yeet a lightsaber or you hit them with a lightsaber. And you're only looking at needing four successes to heal two of that damage back yeah. off yourself that you've already taken. Uh, which feels which feels pretty, and then good. you're also sat in like your more defensive stance overall. It's got yeah. less like gimmicky triggers on it, but it's just a lot more consistent, and you're rolling more dice. Yeah, absolutely. So one to three in perfect defense expertise is going to give you two extra blocks, and four plus is going to give you three extra blocks. Um, so pretty good um, to say the least. I very much believe sinister cunning will be. Uh, the stance that people start in. I, I don't see a reason why you start in Dark Rage. You don't have access to a to a, a ranged attack um, and you have no way of being able to heal yourself off the back of taking the damage for the um for the force power for, for the you know for the force power that you want to spend but yeah. take damage instead. Um Quinn, thoughts on, on Sinister Cunning and, and how it works? Yeah, like I said, it's definitely gonna be the one that I Fur with Maul, I think. Um, I think it's also going to be interesting to see how you end up pairing the like squads from the core box, right? Because obviously it's set up to be light side versus dark side. But there's a lot of Mandalorian synergy. Yes. Obviously, the two Mando squads, they come with primaries that aren't tag dependent in terms of what they do, what their identities are. So I could yep. see a lot of people running, like, Ahsoka Maul together in sort of that what-if scenario of Ahsoka taking Maul up on his offer and trying to, you know, take down Palpatine. Um, I, I could definitely see Ahsoka Maul being, of the core box, the more powerful combination of of the two squads to make a, a strike team. Probably. Uh, either that or it's going to be, like, more Anakin for just sheer damage output. But like Maybe. Maybe, yeah, I yeah. could definitely see like that Mandalorian like synergy being built up, having just you know more there to doing damage to himself, getting in there, hitting people, and then Ahsoka maybe coming along once like a secondary gets put down or a support or whatever, running past and healing more up potentially. Yeah, yeah, I could definitely see that as being something. Um, but yeah, I think I think they've done, you know, talking about the feel of the character and everything else like that. Again, I think they've just done a really good job with it. You know, I cannot, you know, credit where credit is due. You know, we are, we're quick to jump on them when they do things wrong, but equally we need to be quick to, you know, give them credit and kudos when they've, when they've done things right. And again, I think with these call box characters, they've done a, you know, a very, very good job with them. You know, yes, we are still yet to see, although, you know, we've pretty much seen, all the supports now as well, and all the secondaries and what they do, we know they don't have a flip side. Um, so really now we're just waiting for the core box uh, rules to just clarify those last couple of points, are we? Um, so we, you know, yeah. we just know exactly, you know, what order we do resolve things in. Is it am I healing one or am I taking off a condition? Those last sort of it's, things. It's sort of the minutiae that, like, you know, people that are getting into war games for the first time probably won't end up caring about or will learn with time yeah. whereas being sort of veterans of the trade as it were like those are the just key little pressure points that we need to have answers for right yeah and you know we're also not very good at waiting either so you know we want them now amg we want them now um here's hoping that the next um data bank download is here's the rule book um it, it, it's not gonna be no, I know, I know. Y you've got like eight more, and it's I know. all the secondaries, all the supports. 
Hopefully, we... they're really nice, and they what they like, you know, just sort of bundle together the supports and the secondaries together. But they're not going to, and it's going to be awful. <laughs> well, we shall see. We shall see. But there we go, guys. That is our breakdown of Lord Maul. I'm really excited for him. Um, I think he's an absolutely cracking looking model. Again, yeah, we kind amazing. of saw the up close and personal um, uh, unpainted model. You could see all the detail in there that it wasn't freehand. Um, yeah, it's all raised detail. It's just you know, and we've seen from from AMG Queen, haven't we? If we look at the the core box of Marvel Crisis Protocol with the, you know, how little depth the designs had with like Iron Man and that sort of thing compared to yeah. where we are now with their designs. You know, they're, they're a world apart. And luckily yeah. for like, Star Wars like, Shatterpoint, you know, I was going to say, luckily for a... Star Wars Shatterpoint, they've learned everything and they can yeah, was... start from, from the gate with just having great looking models. I was just about to say, like in terms of like both miniature production and the rules in and of themselves it seems like they've learned a lot through their time with mcp well, obviously yeah i think the biggest takeaway that they had from mcp is the tag Keywords system you here yeah yeah um, and also, tags. We, we usually ask a question at the end of these videos to get people to comment and tell them about the uh prize they can win yeah oh we are giving away a car box aren't we so yeah, we are so giving uh, away a car box I, what, i've what? got a question for the people uh, on this okay. fine video so um, obviously, a strike team is two squads. On yes. rule, there are going to be six squads available, we believe. There will be. There will be. So that's obviously the four in the core box. So, uh, you know, Maul with the Super Commandos and Gar Saxon, Ahsoka with Bo-Katan and Night Owls, or Clan Kree's Mandalorians, yeah. uh, Anakin with Rex and the 501st, Ventress with Kalani and the B1s. Then we're also going to see Obi-Wan, Kogi, Obi -Wan. to Wolf. And yep. then Dooku, Django, Magna Guard. My question to the people is, which strike team are you going to paint up first? What are the two squads <clears throat> that make oh. up your first strike team that you're hoping to get painted, get on the table? So, And also, th this can be you know, any range of characters from those selections. Obviously, there's six strike teams, but there's three options within each of... Uh, there's, Six squads. Yeah. The options within each of those squads for primary, secondary, and support. Whilst whilst I do love me some more, because I'm going to answer that question as well, because you know I get to yeah. do that. I mean, I, um, I've got an answer. I I think I have a sneaky feeling that something that will be very powerful is going to be Asajj mm -hmm. with the B ones mm -hmm. and Kalani, Kalani. Uh, yep. and Dooku. And, and obviously, it depends on. Uh, I know Dooku doesn't come with the B twos, does he? he? Come with the Magnus, but with the hope that they have the droid tag. Um, I was thinking Grievous. No. I want to go. Your, I wanna... your... yeah. Too bad. Yeah. Can't. Not the yeah. primary um, set. I I think for me it will be uh, Dooku and Asajj will be the ones that I'll I'll lean into. Yeah. Although I do love me some Maul. I think for me he's a little bit too glass cannony. I want somebody who I'll can. I'll be interested to see him on the table. The so, so I can tell you the exact order that I'm going to do each of the six squads, if you'd like. Go ahead. So, my first strike team that I'm painting up Obi Annie, it's got to be. Fair they're, enough. They're my boys. With their given 501st and 212th? With, with, their, with their given clone counterparts, get that Galactic Republic synergy in there that we know from Anakin's identity. Probably yeah. going to see somewhere else in there as well. Uh, um, also, Rex, Rex as well. Rex, has Rex has of, got... Yeah. Yeah. So, like, hoping to do those as my first ones. Then we're going to go for the Septus. So we're going to go Dooku and Asajj. Once again, their corresponding uh, secondary and support. Then, finally, hopefully before we get, like, Luminar and Grievous, uh, I want to do Maul and Ahsoka with the Mandos. That's fair. That's fair. I, 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 and I always say this every time I start a new game, that I'm going to paint every single... They're all going to get paid. I'm going to do them. I'm going to spend time on them, and I'm going to pay. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm going to end up with... They're going to be grey plastic, and then they're going to be plum plastic, and then they're going to be done. Yeah, something like that. Something like that. Well, uh, I'm very go, much committed to, like, <laughs> just painting on release for this game. Yeah, I might, Obviously, I, might I let that get away with me for MCP, but I'm not letting it, letting it happen with this game. <laughs> well, we will see. Um... 
Quinn did mention we are giving away a car box. We are indeed giving away a car box. We're going to be doing the draw um, sometime at the beginning of May to celebrate Star Wars Day. Uh, what do you need to be to do to be with a chance of winning? Well, you need to, first of all, make sure that you subscribed. Uh, that's the first thing you need to do. Second of all, you need to leave a like. Um, and then third of all, you need to leave a comment on this plus the other videos that we do. Um, why do we do that? Well, it gets you to go and watch the other videos, of course. Um, but in Also, Mr. The... YouTube likes it when you say things. Mr. YouTube likes it, yeah. Um, we have asked a question like this in every single one of our Shatterpoint videos, uh, so you need to go and you need to make sure that you answer that question. Uh, don't just leave a random comment, because if you win and you don't answer the question, you ain't getting the prize. There, there will be a um, quiz at the end as well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there will be a 12 part quiz in ever increasing difficulty question. No, um, so we're going to be doing Dude, that. Under um, the and we'll be giving away a car box to one random lucky uh, subscriber and commenter, and we'll be picking the video at random as well. So, no idea how many more videos we're going to be doing between now and then. This might be like video number 10 or 12 or something, um, but go check them out. Um, you know, put them on the background while you're painting. The you know, they're quite funny to listen to. Um, to watch how we just progressively get closer to <laughs> to where the actual game is. I mean, you you can go and witness all of the uh, Oracle's predictions. Oh, here we go every single time. Um, guys, please leave a like. It really, really does help. If you want to support us even further, uh, we do have our Patreon up and running as well. Where from a little as a pound a month, you can help support the channel. Uh, we've also got a Discord with a dedicated Shatterpoint page on there as well, or a Shatterpoint section. And as always, guys, it leaves me with just enough time to say stay well, Keep safe, and until next time, may the force be with you. And obey!